Wow. This is one of those times when things don't go the way you hope they do. <laughs> but uh, there was a silver lining and everything worked out okay. I just couldn't believe it. Look at this armature. And after months of working on this engine and finally getting it finished, 15 minutes into operation, and this is what happens. <laughs> I don't know if devastated is too strong a word, but I was extremely disappointed. Because, yeah, I mean, wouldn't you be? You work hard at something and it's finished and then it's not. So, um, I did some research and some checking about the possibility of buying a new armature or commutator, and it just wasn't in the cards. I didn't have a budget of, you know, a hundred bucks to buy a new SIT unit. So, I figured, what, what have I got to lose? So, I went and grabbed my friends, uh, JB Weld, and had them come over, and we had a little gluing party. And I had no idea if this would work or not, but again, uh, got to try it. I mean, can't ruin it, can't make it worse than it is. And uh, what do you know? It actually held. I couldn't believe it. So after uh, I was able to get the, the plate uh, glued back on top, um, I started looking at the shape of things. Um, noticed that there was a bit of unevenness between uh, the copper plates and also it was pretty grimy and uh, uh, so uh, one one time uh, on another video where I had been working with uh, the the armature face on another commutator uh, one of the persons commented hey you know you should put it in a drill and uh, use that as a way to spin it and then put some sandpaper up against it which I wish I was smart enough to think of these things ahead of time instead of spending hours sanding by hand. But uh, I put it in my Dremel. I have this little uh, drill platform for my Dremel. And uh, you see me using first an 80 grit, then a 400 grit, uh, then I have an 800 grit, and then I have a uh, 2400 grit final uh, sandpaper that I use. Uh, I mean, you really should have some sort of a milling machine if you wanted to make it completely smooth. Um, I just wanted to uh, kind of knock down some of the rough edges, if you will. And like I said, even out uh, the copper plates to some degree. I mean, obviously those brushes uh, have some play. They've got springs behind them. so they can... As you can see, got it nice and polished, shined up, evened out. And uh, then came the hard stuff. Um, as you know, the, the wires that are used in these commutators have an enamel coating. And so that means they don't solder. And so if you're going to solder these wires, you actually have to scrape the enamel coating off. Well, the first one I went to do that, I was trying to be careful and sure enough, snapped it right in two. So then I took a single strand of stranded wire and attached it to the now too short lead off of one of the fields on this commutator. And then I had to, of course, coat that with just a little bit of my... Uh, a liquid tape, uh, which you'll see me doing here in just a minute. And then after I did that and let it dry, the next thing was, okay, now uh, I no longer have little grooves on the sides of the armature because my glue filled in the crack. So I had to put it on the stand here, put a put a drill or diamond tip uh, bit in the Dremel and, and create a new groove. And then it was just a matter of kind of fighting with this really, really tiny wire. Uh, when I say fiddly job, I am not joking. <laughs> this, is a, this is the kind of stuff that really helps, uh, helps you build patience and perseverance. And of course that ultimately leads to character. And, and I know that's why I'm into doing repairs like this, is to build my character. Anyhow. Um, as you can see, uh, finally get it going here and I, I've sped this up just because uh, it would make you all crazy if you watched it in real time. Um, and I'm going to fast forward here, and it's not going to quite go along with the video, because what happened was I attached one wire, assembled everything, it didn't work. 
So I, I got my, uh, my meter out, I was testing continuity, and uh, found that there was something wrong with the armature. So I took it back apart, found another wire had, had snapped off on one of the other fields that I hadn't messed with yet. So I worked at putting that back together, finally got that, and um, then I had to work at getting some of the extra solder off the top of the armature, and then I put it into the SIT unit, and I still had too much solder on the side of the armature, and it was going up against the little brass spacers um, to the, the side <laughs> of the armature. Take it back apart. You understand how this is going, all right? So this, this kind of monkey business happened several times. I finally put, get all of it cleaned up. Everything seems to be in good order. Wires are attached. It spins freely. I don't have anything uh, interfering with the rotation. And the thing takes off for like five rotations and stops. And I'm like, now what? Here I find on the field, uh, the, the field on the other side of the armature, one of those wires has come loose. <laughs> Anyhow, finally get all that put back together, and <clears throat> I, I, I kind of spin it by hand. I can feel that it's getting hot, and uh, I'm not quite sure why it's not spinning, so I start to mess with the pressure on the screws at the back there, just thinking, well, maybe I've got it too tight, or maybe it's, it's a little bit uh, bound, because um, I've got one screw tighter than the other. I keep messing with it, and all of a sudden, it takes off. And I'm so excited, but yet yeah, it's it sounds like a sick sick donkey or something. I mean, I don't know. It's it sounds sick to me. You can hear it's not running very well, and um, so <laughs> I start messing again with the screws um, periodically. I I push on the uh, the baffles or the uh, bellows just to make sure that uh, that, that I'm getting smoke out. You know that, that that's working okay and uh, keep messing with stuff, messing with stuff, and then it dawns on me there's two issues. One is one of the, sp the springs behind one of the brushes, the one on top, is not making very good contact. So that's one issue. Um, another issue I realized is that I've changed uh, the surface of the armature, and so the brushes no longer have their groove, if you, if you will. And since they're used, they're worn, um, they're not a flat surface, and I didn't I didn't sand those smooth to begin with. So what's part of the issue here too is that those are kind of wearing in, if you will. Um, and as as the time goes on, um, it does start running better. I get more RPMs out of it, um, and it stops sounding quite so terrible. I also add a little bit more lubrication at a couple points along the way, and that that does make uh, a big difference, even though. I put oil or uh, I put my lightweight grease in it as I put it back together. So anyhow, if you have a project like this, there's a couple things I need to recommend to you. One of those is be patient and take your time. Um, it's, it's worth doing it well and it's worth doing it right because you'll be happy with the results. Another thing I want to say is that it's very rewarding to have something like this actually get fixed. And so don't give up. And uh, if, if, if you get frustrated with it, just set it down, walk away, and let your mind kind of ruminate. Think about, okay, what have I tried? Um, what have I noticed? And then, you know, after a day or two, come back to it and take another look at it. Is there something that you missed? Um, because when we're dealing with these tiny little wires and tiny little parts, it's really easy to overlook something. And like I said, uh, you could have a little bit too much solder on the side of your armature and that's binding up as the, as the commutator spins and stopping it from rotating. I mean, it could be something that simple. Or it could be that the on-off switch underneath is actually in the off position. I mean, it could be something very, very simple. So please be encouraged to not give up. Um, like I said, 
there's a lot of footage I cut out of here because there's so many other trials and tribulations that I went through to get this thing together. Um, but uh, yeah, it works. So thanks again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this journey. And uh, be encouraged, don't give up, persevere. The results are worth it. And uh, you can have some fun in the process. And as always, thank you so much for joining me today. And if you have any comments or any feedback, I'd love to hear it. And if you wanna share swap war stories about your repairs, excellent stuff, great, great stories. I love to hear that. So. Uh, uh, if you want to send me an email, uh, you'll see my email at, back at the home page, and uh, please, please let me know. I'd love to love to converse with those of you that are into this hobby or wanting to be. So uh, until next time, take care and enjoy your trains.